Praise God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, holy name. Amen. Put your hands together, please. Good morning. I said good morning. Wow, it's a beautiful sunny morning. Thank you so much for coming back from, uh, I hope you had a good uh, Thanksgiving. Amen. Were you invited? No? Next year I'll invite you somewhere. Amen. We had a good time and... Of course, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, somebody mentioned that Thanksgiving is not just an occasion, but it's a lifestyle, isn't it? Amen? And last week, I've asked several people what, uh, what, what are they grateful for, thankful for, and there are so many reasons. And I think, uh, I'm not going to ask anyone this morning, and, and, and it will take the whole day, I believe, or to even tomorrow, but there are so many things that we should be thankful for, isn't it? Amen? Well, number one... Uh, Thanksgiving is a time, and as we conclude, and uh, Pastor Rachel said, it's uh, happy almost Christmas, merry almost Christmas, and I, aren't you cold? Yeah? Snow. <laughs> yeah, I, those are very big snowflakes, right? I'm cold, and, and I think we just want you to feel, especially for those from the northern part of the world, uh, we want you to feel very cold. And uh, so you won't miss your home as much. And th that's all. Next week, we'll try to get some fake snow, and it'll just kind of blow and yeah, just make you feel as if you're home. Amen. Well, with a smile on your face, I, I do believe, I may assume that you had a good Thanksgiving, uh, either celebration or, or uh, dinner, isn't it? Yeah. Gratefulness. Well, we can probably... Um, um, say how many we need to be thankful. Number one, we are thankful for our God, right? Amen? Aren't you thankful? We are thankful for our families. Somebody mentioned that sometimes Thanksgiving is not that, that festive, especially when there's a family uh, situation. And we can understand that. It's very hard to uh, say God is good when something is going on. But, but the Word of God says, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. Now, as we move along, there's no such thing as we will be exempted from situation that we may not understand. But God is always good. He wants us to know that He loves us in spite of many things. Isn't it? Amen. I have so many to be, uh, to be thankful for. Uh, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. All right? But i like for us to cons um, consider... Uh, as we close this Thanksgiving month, I want us to consider this message, and it has to do with, with my personal as a pastor. Last month, I talked about my personal pastor's prayer, and this month, i like, if you consider, uh, if I may, uh, consider this message uh, regarding thankful for our ALC family. Amen. Thank you for our ALC family. I'm thankful for each one of you. I'm thankful uh, for what God has brought us through. In any relationship, what I found out is that as you stick around, as you continue to go through the, uh, the battles, the, the uh, ups and downs, eventually as you look back, you would see the whole avenue of what God wants you to experience. In a relationship, what I found out, this personal to me, if I know that God's will is what I'm after, I'd like to stick around. I want to finish the course. Um, let, it, let it just grow. I've been in many situations wherein, on the onset, I, I quit. I, I haven't seen the whole thing because it was hard and difficult. I booked out. I booked out. I just actually went out of the relationship in the situation, so I didn't really see the full gravity of what God wants me to experience and grow. Well, in a church setting, it's the same thing. It's a church, church setting. And I do believe the church, which is the local body, which is us, is the last uh, organization, if you would, that God has established for us to touch this generation and the next 
generation. I do believe that each one of us should be vested that we need to love one another. One another. And so when we consider uh, thankful for our ALC family, I, I'm thankful to God for our ALC family. I mean that with all my heart. I mean that because uh, there's a certain element that we, God is preparing us so that when we are in the presence of God, we know each other. We are not just signing in as a, in a corporate body or uh, employment. It is more than that. As a matter of fact, friendship is the same thing. You start from a level of unsurety, uh, being unsure, to a level where you begin to see each other, especially in marriage, when you look at each other, you know what needs to be done. That is how God wants us to have a relationship in his church, in his church. There are many people, many reasons, excuses, I would say, why people don't go to church. Say, some people say it's boring. Some people say it's boring. Some people will say it's irrelevant. Some people say uh, I've been forced. I've been, some people say that it's not, uh, it's not something that of my, of my own nature. I, I don't want to go to church. And sometimes for those who are attending churches, they might go because they've been forced. They might go because of a tradition. They might go because of a habit. There are many reasons. And, and that is not the purpose of God. The purpose of God is for us to be part of a family. Um, somebody, if somebody would do reason, well, I was forced to go to church when I was young. So therefore, now that I'm old, I don't want to go to church anymore. Isn't that ironic? It's the same thing if you ask him, well, were you forced to take shower or take a bath when you were little? My mom, boys, you know this, right? We don't want to take shower or bath, right? We want to feel like we're, we're, we're raw, right? We were forced to take shower. Uh, did that kill you? Did, did, are you still taking shower now? I hope you are because, yeah, right? And so it's an excuse. It's a lame excuse when somebody says, I was forced to go to church when I was little, so therefore now that I'm old, I'm not, I don't want to go to church anymore. It's the same thing as that. So that is a lame excuse because the enemy will try to distract us from what's the purpose. Why am I so thankful? Where the church first? It is not this building. It is not, although it has gravitated into this. As a matter of fact, there was a negative uh, definition of church when you say, we want to go to church, or we are the church. When you come, we become corporate body. When we leave this place, this becomes empty. We are the church. You and I, when we come together, we are the corporate body. Jesus Christ says, and I will build my church. It is God's idea. It is not my idea. I was never, uh, when, when God called me many, many years ago, I tried to run away from it because I know Hard-headed people just like me cannot go along, but God has to change you. So it is God's idea. Can you say that with me? It is God's idea. All right, it is God's idea because that's how he wants us to be part of a spiritual body. It's like getting married. You, either you, you remain faithful or stay single is what it's saying. You have to be faithful to work. What I found out also that God has so many little, what I call, local churches. I would assume there are military folks here from one area to another. God would, every time that we have people that would come, we rejoice receiving them. But it's always hard for me to pray a blessing starting when they leave because they have made an impact. When they leave the place, I say, Lord, can you please, whatever they learn from this church, when they go to another base, can you please plan them that they will be an impact so that the pastor will be receiving them, will look back and say, you know what? Your church, your previous church has taught you well. That is my prayer. And I do believe that's what it is. So there are pockets of different local churches, big ones, small ones, urban, rural, anywhere. Why? Because God is so unique that he's not looking at the numbers of attendees, but he's looking at those that are part of his spiritual body. When you go to a certain place, there's this camaraderie, and you know your spirit are together. You would see that, that they are the sons and daughters of the king. And I think there are people here right now that, that have come from different churches, and they miss still. I, I understand. But when they come, says, God, 
Here's my uh, encouragement to them. When God takes you to another place that's a local church, melt in. Be part of it. Don't just attend because you will miss out a portion of your life that God wants to bring out. Enjoy. We were in the military as well. My pastor would say, when you go to the place, don't surround yourself with the safety of the military base. The world is outside. The military folks go outside and, and, and smell the roses. Be part of the community. That when you leave this place, they would say, we miss those families. And there are many around. So it is God's idea. I'm talking about the big spiritual church. Ecclesia, we are called out one. We are special. From the world, God has given us the opportunity to be part of a family. Not by name, but you become Ecclesia, the called out one. We are. The book of Acts says, so guard yourselves and God's people, feed and shepherd God's flock, his church. Say that with me, his church. Whose church? The Lord's church, purchased with his own blood. And so therefore, anyone who tries to become part, we are under shepherds. Jesus Christ is the great shepherd. He's the good shepherd. And my, uh, and my marching order is this. Feed, shepherd, love, heal the wounds, even wipe some something on their noses when they bleed. That's my job. And the only thing you can do is that hopefully it will, it will come out. It will begin to, to be part of a local church. Ephesians 1, 22. God has put all things under the authority of Christ. And he made himself, what? Head over all things for the benefit of his church. Jesus Christ is the head. We are the body. We are part. We are never separate. And so when you come apart from different churches, when you come together, there's one other thing. Jesus Christ is still Lord, and we are part. And we are part of a local church. When you become part of ALC, when you become part of ALC, you need to say, am I go this is going to be the church? If it's going to be the church, dwell in there, move into it. Just, just become part of what's happening because you will grow and begin to love people around you. The local church was designed to be a community in which the people of God grows in worship and praise, flourish, and begin to grow. That's how. Because you and I can never grow on the outside world because they will teach you otherwise. But the church itself, the local body, is where each one of us will be what? To be one for the Lord, discipled, consolidated, and then sent out to the world. That's how. The teaching, the last teaching organization of Jesus Christ before the rapture or before he returns back. Any pseudo organization must be tied in into a local church. Why? Because that's where the grooming, the mentoring, the discipleship. Show me a person that is growing the Lord and I'll show you a person that is dwell into it. You know, even I found out um, in the early stage, you know, there are so many, for example, the Catholic Church, right? The Catholic Church has so many small parishes around. It used to be that you can, because of the time, you can go from, say, for example, Mangilao, you can go to one church over there, and then if you miss it, you can go to Dededo, or you can go to Berigada, and they found out later on that they don't know who they are. They just, they just go there to out of habit and tradition, they go there to receive their portion. But the priest, or that they call, they call now pastors, I would say, who are you, you know? Because there's no connection. And they've changed that. They've changed that wherein you begin to identify yourself in a local parish so that if you have water baptism, if you have death in the family, they can actually know you. Because that's how a church family should grow. And it's the same thing. And when you begin to do that, you begin to grow and mature. Apostles, uh, back at uh, chapter 2, verse 47, 47 says, And they joined with other believers, and then they, and they, they what? And devoted themselves in the apostles' teaching, sharing the Lord's Supper, 
and in the prayer, they began to grow and mature. The believers met together in a deep sense of awe came over them, and all the apostles performed many miracles. In other words, they were meeting in the places, in the synagogues, in the place, and they constantly shared everything that they had. And then it says they stole their possessions, they worshiped together at the temple, the big one, the, lo uh, the local assembly, and they what? And they ate Lord's Supper at home. We have a ministry called Life Cells. Life Cells is, is where you begin to become part of a local setting. When you grow, when you begin to, when you ask questions. So a bigger one, the temple, and then you have a small one. It's not enough to have on Sunday. Can you imagine if we're married, it's like, well, you know, we're married now, we'll just see you on Sunday morning, and then we'll come, well, every Sunday. That marriage will not last. So marriage in a church, same thing. We have to be part. We have to be identified. We need to grow together in the Lord. Amen? Assembling together, Hebrews 10, 20, 24, 25, to bring together. That's why synagogue or synergy begin. Now let me tell you this, and, 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 and I said that to say this. Why am I thankful for each one of you? Why am I thankful for my family? Not because you always give me balutan every time you ask me, right? Do you know the word term balutan? All right? Balutan is my favorite word. Balutan is meaning you are asking a family, you eat their, their food, and then we say before you go, usually what I do, I, I just pretend to go like this. Bye. Yeah. But I will move. Bye. And they will say, Pastor, can you get some balut? And I say, no, I'm embarrassed. No, Pastor, no. But, sweetheart, can you get, uh, Pastor, do you? say, oh, yeah. So I, I said, honey, I, and I just say balut, and they know. Red rice, uh, peanut Danny, barb. I'm sorry again. Oh, man, I'm serious. So, you know what? That's, that is a family. Why am I loved? Number one is this. Jesus loved his church. Why do I love you? Why do you, you have to be be influenced to love the local body assembly because Jesus Christ loves his church. Jesus loves you personally and corporately. You are part of his body. That's why he loves you. Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Number one is this. Why do I love Abundant Life Church family? Is because Jesus loves each one of you. Isn't that amazing? So if Jesus Christ loves you, I need to love you back. If, lo if Jesus Christ loves you, you need to love me back. And so it's like, hey, you know what? We can work it out. Number one is this. The reason why I love the local church, wherever that is, and, and in the particular time and moment, it's Abundant Life Church here. Why do I love it? Because Jesus Christ loves his church. Number two is that it connects me to a spiritual family. It connects me to a spiritual family and prevents me from becoming by myself, by myself. An old time pa uh, Christian was, was attending for the longest time a certain church. And for a moment, he began to drift away because a situation happened in their home. It was the middle of winter, of course. Uh, the pastor visited, and, and as they were, there was this fireplace. And, and as, as, the, as the old gen gentleman gave all the excuses why he doesn't want to go to church anymore. The pastor just kind of took the tongue and, and took out an amber, um, a burning coal, a burning wood, took it out from the, the middle of the fireplace and put it outside, uh, isolated it without saying anything. And the old gentleman kind of asked, he was, and, then, and then he looked. And then from the big fire, from the big burning uh, firewood, the one that he took out was started with that fire in it. And eventually what it happens that because it's isolated by itself, it began to fade in its energy. And the guy says, he looked at the past says, I know what you mean. Let me go back. Why? Because when we are isolated, when we are alone, we are in danger of being tempted persecuted, being isolated. That is the enemy's tactic. And so when you have a spiritual family, when you have a pastor or under shepherd that, can, that you trust, there has to be that one-on-one -on -one situation when you begin to be part of accountability. When you begin to say that, you begin to be connected. You have to begin to be part. And I do believe there are so many Christians 
that are outside just wanting. It is like when I, when I there was joking and it says, hey, you, you've been attending ALC, right? Yeah, I've been attending ALC for how many years now? Two years. Uh, are you still visiting? Yes, I'm still visiting. I said, when are you going to settle? Because once you settle, then we can impart what God has for you. Amen? Look at this. Uh, this is war. It is now the norm among families. You can be so preoccupied with technology that you can have your own communication. Look at this. Um, talking together, waiting for theirs, but the person that they would check would be their cell phones. We tried at one time. The first person we put our cell phones on the table, the first person to check their cell phone, they pay for it. <laughs> you can see the cringing, oh, dad, can I? No, 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 if you touch your cell phone, you pay. And then if you touch it and you pay, I'll order the most expensive steak. <laughs> and everybody, oh, you know what? That is an isolation. And at the same time, you know this, right? And, and that's something that you, that, that, that is something that you may be there. I like to, uh, I've gave this illustration before. Uh, in, um, it says here, the righteous is a forest. They're planted, the house shall what? Shell flourish in the court of the Lord. The more you are planted in the local church, the more you grow. Um, look at this. This is the General Sherman. Uh, it is a sequoia. We've been there several times, and uh, if you have the opportunity, go there, and, and you will see this massive trees, um, and they're so massive. What you can, what you can note also that this massive sequoia trees, uh, they would grow up, but on the sides, you would see that there's, an, there's sort of a distance between the next one to the other, because the sequoia actually, the energy of all the resources of the, of the place, it has to, has to be taken by the giant sequoia tree. And they're massive. They're massive and they're so huge. And so there are several, several, and so you would see them, they're tall. They're known that they are loners. They, they, can, they can survive by themselves. That is not how God uh, wants the church. There's another one that, that they usually use, and look at this massive one. All right? This is what they call the quaking aspen. When there's a, when there's a place that needs to be polluted, repopulated with uh, trees, they use the, uh, the uh, aspen. What happens is, all they need to do is plant several. What they do is that, from that point, they begin, the place will be populated with the aspens. You know why? Because they begin to their roots begin to help one another. Help one another. The sequoia takes the whole resources of that particular place. They're massive, but they're loners. But God wants us to be part of a community that helps one another. The Aspen is like for us Christians. When we begin, we need to be part. Amen? Look at that. All right. Number three is that it makes me part of a family that helps that hell cannot overcome. Jesus Christ says, and I tell you this, says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not overcome it. We are part of Christ's body that hell can never, never, never overcome. Number four, it places people in my life who will pray for me. How many of you have ever been in a situation wherein I wish someone can pray for me. I wish. The church is, ALC's backbone is prayer. There are many people that are praying. We, uh, when, when people put their prayer requests, we send them off to the Lord saying, God, prayer is the key that unlocks God's attention and resource. Prayer. Everybody believes in prayer, but ours is in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a sense. Nobody. When we share to people, when you tell them to pray, they never turn down prayer. Can, can we pray for you? They will say, oh, no, I don't want to for you. No, they will say, yes, can you pray for me, please? They will always, here at the Bond Life Church, here at the Life Cells, we don't stop. We don't end without praying. We always pray, especially when there's a loss in the family, there's, there's, there's a failing in marriage, a relationship. We always pray. Why? Because we believe that God not only hears our prayer, he answers them. 
Amen? Not only hear them. Can you imagine that to be isolated? And there's so many, many. One of the things that we have found out is that when people are in their dip, dip then they are low point, just to be with them and pray for them strengthens because it revitalizes their faith in the Lord. Isaiah 65, verse 24 says, It shall come fast that before they call, I will, what? I will answer. Before they call, before they utter their needs, says, and I will, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. I will hear. God says, whatever your situation that you are in now, bring it to the Lord. Pray. Pray before God. It helps us. When people say, how did you, how do you manage to, you know, 22 years and before that as an associate pastor for Teen Challenge, how do you manage to be on the forefront all the time in, in, in the battle? There are many people that are praying for me, for our families, for you. There are many people. I kid you not. Can I say this to her, if you don't mind? Okay. You know, sometimes, I would say, that 22 years of preaching, right? And sometimes the enemy will sidetrack you in the morning. Sometimes I say, when, when, when we were just new in the ministry, you know, uh, you know what's intense fellowship? Sometimes, you no. Know, intense fellowship meaning, you know, misunderstanding in, in a way. And because you know I need to preach that morning, you know, sometimes from home, when I see my turn, I just want to drive past the church because I don't feel well. I don't feel, how can you talk about God's love? How can you talk about friendship? How can you talk about humility when I just hurt my wife's feeling? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make, you know, I, I'll be a hypocrite. And sometimes I, like, I just want to drive off to the sunset and maybe go somewhere where nobody knows me here in the island I'm going, which is impossible. Yeah? But as soon as I pass the church, oh, there's this sense of somebody is, is, is pulling the heavens, praying, Lord, I pray for my pastor. Lord, I pray for Pastor Albert, whatever he's going through. You know? And that's how you, oh, yeah. And then you, you have to, you know, quickly I would tell my wife, honey, whatever happened this morning, I forgive you. It's done. <laughs> and she looked at me, you know, okay. And no, she never. But there are times, but I know somebody's praying. And then, you know what? And people will know. They know, Pastor, you went, you've gone through uh, today, right? You, you have gone. Yeah, I know, because I was so down. Because we know we fell. But we continue to pray so that God will strengthen you. I said, man, thank you for not giving up. Thank you for praying for me. That is the strength that I get from you. And I pray that you will not forget praying for the leaders. There are so many. But thank God for ALC family. They pray for me. They pray for you. They pray for each other. There's victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we put our hands together? Yeah. Amen. The next one is, is it provides ministries for myself and my family's welfare. I just want to side, uh, do a side track here. For those of you that, have, that want to have families eventually or you have children now, please plug them into the ministries of either here, if, you're, if you have called ALC as your home family of church, please let them be part of the kids' church, CFM, Crossfire Ministries, the young adults, the young professional worship. Keep them plugged in as close to the heart of God. You know why? Because there'll be a time that their hearts will no longer be as, as tender as they are now. On Saturday, on, on Sunday, on, on Fridays, there's prayer. On Sunday, please encourage them. Don't Send them to church. Go with them. Go with them. And I have seen so many people would come to me once. Some said, Pastor, can you pray for my son? Why? You know, they used to, well, because they've been so busy with activities. They, you know, sometimes I say, you know what? We've talked about this before. Please let them be plugged in because God's gift is, is, and resources must be used first in his kingdom. Amen. Acts 13 says in the church, there were, there were prophet and teacher, Barnabas, Sime, uh, Simeon, and well, Niger. There are, there are many people that can actually become part. It helps me develop, here's the one, long-lasting friendships. 
Can I call, if you don't mind, uh, all the pastors, please, if you don't mind, can you stand? If you're a pastor here at Bun Life Church, would you stand for a second? Amen. Pastor Sin, Pastor Rick, Pastor Eric, Amen. Joe, Pastor Doc Gilbert, what else? We have couples and. Huh? Where's Pastor Brian? There he is, standing over there. Look at us. If you, if you, can you look, look around them? Aren't we all young looking? Yeah? I know. The youngest looking is Pastor Brian and Pastor Eric and Pastor Noel and who else? All right. Do you know? Thanks so much. God bless you. Here's what happened, okay? During our early times, we have different platforms. We have different ways of doing ministry. And, and God, by his grace, I saw Abundant Life Church as a big tanker or an oil tanker. You know what that is, right? If you, uh, 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 oil, oil, uh, oil tanker, okay? And I saw it. I said, everyone, we were in it together. And I said, Lord, give me the grace. I would rather have a speedboat. You know what I'm saying? Fast. Boom. But I saw a big tanker, and I didn't know you yet, all of you, but I saw in the future there are many people inside that tanker. And I know when that tanker moves, it moves slow. When it turns, it turns slow. And there'll be impatience during the turning. And, and I said, Lord, I want a speedboat that can zoom, zoom, zoom. Everything is done, and I saw a huge tanker that can turn this way. And as the under shepherd, I said, Lord, give me the patience, the endurance to say what you want and be firm. And I would say there were many people that said, look, Pastor, you know what? I, I don't think you're doing right. I said, I, I don't either, but I know I'm doing God's will. So some people say, you are a dictator. And you just, I said, I don't, I, I can imagine Moses, uh-huh, that's, they, they told me the same thing. I said, I have to move this way. And everyone's, and, and eventually, as they began to see the, uh, the love, the, the patience taking care, and they went, oh, you know what, I think we'll give Pastor Albert a chance. That was many, many years ago. They could have, they have so many gifts. And then finally, when they settled down and they began to see that what, we are trying to do is, is, is for God's glory. They begin from being positional leaders. You know how positional leaders, right? Positional leaders is that you are paid to do it. That has been taken out, and out of that began to be respect. Out of respect began to be, now we are in a level, I, I think. We are on a level of a, of a friendship that is beyond positional because positional is very, very uh, shaky in a point now that you are in a position of friendship, that anything will happen, you are still together, and I will never, never trade the pastors, the leaders, the lifestyle leaders in, in this world forever. I, would even, I won't even trade them for a million. If somebody gives me a million dollars now and says, can we trade you with this? I will never, never try... Uh, 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 trade you for a million that's how much you are to me maybe two millions but no a million no never <laughs> but what i'm simply saying is that in the church you will build friendship that will last a lifetime that is what you want that is what you want so that when you begin to be in your seniors you would say you have friendship Value the friendship that God has given you because it is very important. I can learn from the fast servants around me. Fast meaning faithful, available, submissive, and teachable. This is where we have, I've changed the, uh, this is where you begin to see the, the disciple building process of a Bund Life Church from the very beginning. When you begin to be part of a church or an organization, you have to know the disciple building process. From the very beginning, a newcomer, this and that, there has to be a way that you and I will grow. We begin to see from being, uh, knowing Christ, growing in Christ, serving Christ, these are all aspects of growing in the Lord. You have to be part 
of what God is doing in his church. Amen? It encouraged my soul having holy people around me. Do you know that you are holy? All right, because the word of God says this, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ, meaning we are, we are uh, fallen, but we are called holy in the sight of God. When you receive Christ, our positions change. We become sons and daughters of the king. The mannerism and ways, the habits may be there, but as far as God is concerned, we are sons and daughters of the king. Amen? So don't let the enemy tell you otherwise of your past. Don't let him remind you of the past because God, as far as he's concerned, by the blood of Jesus Christ, he made you and I holy. Are we perfect? No. Are you looking for a perfect church? If you are, as soon as you step inside the church, that church is no longer perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect local church. Only a perfect God using imperfect men and women just like you and me. He is Lord of all. Number nine is it strengthens my spiritual walk. When I see you, you know what, what, what will encourage me? Right now, in this, in this congregation, there are members that have just lost a loved one. A father, a grandmother. There's a family that's going through sickness, and they're here. They might be, have a hanging clouds over their head, and they might not know what's going on, but they want to be part. That encourages me. When you go through the battles, then you say, God, you are more than enough. That encouraged me. When a parent, when parents are going through a little bit of, of change in their families, the children are not having good relationship, and they still press on, I would say, Lord, what is my reason not to strengthen when I see families that are involved with drugs and addiction and all that, and they still continue to persevere. What is my reason? What is my excuse not to serve you? That encourages me. And when you see them outside, they would just pat in the back. You know what? You are a very, you are encouraging me. There are many. You are encouraging me as much as you can. And then a place to worship, a place to experience the worship of God, the setting of the word. This is where the rubber meets the road. And the last one is this. This is my final for ALC family. It causes me to be hungry for the things of God. It causes me to be thirsty for the things of God. When, when, when we begin to see this, when we begin, Psalm 27 is one thing I've asked of the Lord is this, that I want, that I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David the king says one thing. All the accolades, all the things that we can see that are nice can never compare. I pray that as you grow in, in this church, the Bond Life Church, as you call a local family member, that you begin to say, God, that I will continue to have this thirst and hunger for the things of God, that I will continue to press on in spite of the things that are, we are going through. We are called, and there are many are called. And after that, we need to believe. We are called to belong after we believe. In other words, we have to settle somewhere and take what God has established, an imperfect church, but a perfect God. Perhaps the things that we do not want to see with others are the things that God wants to take away from us. Perhaps we can see others the way we see ourselves. And so therefore, God is saying that you and I, we are cold. And I'm thankful, and I'm closing with this. Let us be thankful to God. Amen? Amen. Not only that, that we need to love. And if you have called ALC as your local body, love it, pray for it, because you are an encouragement. And I'm so thankful this Thanksgiving for each one of you for being part of ALC. It is my prayer that also you will grow and mature as we grow together in the Lord. Would you please bow your heads for a moment? Father, again, we thank you this morning. And I thank you, God, as we close, conclude this 20 
17th Thanksgiving month. Father, we always bless you. But all the tangible things that we see, the people that you have created, they are as imperfect as we are. But we are in this journey together called life. There'll be, there'll be downs, there'll be ups, there will be victories and defeats, there'll be moments. But I pray, God, in those moments that, Lord, that we will not isolate, help us not to isolate ourselves, but to continue to press on. I pray, God, for those that are going through difficulties in their lives, loss in their families, sickness, relational problems. Lord, I pray, as an under-shepherd, I pray that you will be with them. Lord, as an under-shepherd, as a pastor, Lord, I wish I can pray instantly things will become rosy, become overnight. Everything is well, but I cannot do that. It is your timing. It is your will. It is your grace. It is your plan. That perhaps there will be a time of a season of, of emptiness, a season of, of questions and, and, and surety, a season of pain, a season of sickness. But, oh God, that is how you want us to know you as a good God in season and out of season. So as we are so grateful to the things that we can say are good, our lives, our family, our children, our employment, our resources, the things that, are, that we can control, thank you so much, oh God. Even the festivities, oh God, for having a family there, thank you so much for those. But, oh God, I pray that we will not neglect the coming together, not only just come together, but be part, glued together, working together, because that's what you want us to be. That the pains of those that are part of your church will be felt, will be, will be a pain as well so that they will know that they are not traveling alone in this journey. It can be lonely sometimes, God, but you are our great God. Lord, I pray this morning that we will learn to count our blessings. That includes the person that is sitting beside us, our children, our families. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, Bless his holy name. Thank you so much, oh God, this morning. Thank you so much, oh God, as we are about to conclude. While your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you have never received Christ's free gift of forgiveness, a new life, a new family, a citizenship in heaven, this is an opportunity that God is presenting. All we need to do is to repent, to forgive our, to ask God to forgive us of our sins and to believe that God is God. Jesus Christ is God and he died for our sins. Would you pray this prayer with me? Father, I confess that I'm a sinner, guilty of separation from you, there's no good things that I can ever do to earn my forgiveness. That's why you sent Jesus Christ to take my place at Calvary. His blood was shed for my sin because without the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, there's no forgiveness of my sin. I believe he's God. So I repent of all my sins. Forgive me. I open my heart and invite Jesus Christ to come. I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior. 
I also accept you as my Lord. Lead me. Let me be part of your plan, of your family. Thank you so much. I also pray, God, for those that are going through difficulties in their lives right now. I pray, God, peace that surpasses understanding will be to those who have lost a loved one. Healing to those that are going through sicknesses. Comfort to those who are unsure of their future. Give them direction, O oh God, that in season and out of season, we will say, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. May I ask you please to stand. Let's sing this song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. I worship your holy name. Let's sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. we thank you this morning this Sunday will never happen again we thank you that you know each one of us and I pray blessings be upon each one of us from the fathers to the mothers to the children may your name be glorified and I pray God that we will continue to honor you by being part of your local church in Jesus mighty name we pray and everyone will say Amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give somebody a high five and you may be seated. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>